You know, everybody has their own special things that make it Christmas. For some, it's the spirit of giving and sharing a special time with loved ones. For me, it's the tinsel. Huh? And I'll tell you something, the tinsel manufacturers are aware of guys like me. They make us pay through the nose. Well, that doesn't strike me as a very Christmassy attitude, so I've come up with a way to shaft those guys big time. <laughs> Borrow the paper shredder from work. You know, I find the Christmas party is a great time to sneak stuff out the back door. You know, office supplies or computers or whatever. Hey, it's Christmas, huh? <laughs> you know what they say, the Lord helps those who help themselves. <laughs> but we're not going to shred paper, oh no. We're going to shred a bunch of these foiled potato chip bags. <laughs> Make sure they're completely empty first, but if you're like me, and I'm pretty sure you are, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> All right, first, just turn on your paper shredder, and it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. because today is our Santa Claus parade. And I, men just love being in parades. You know, you get to drive a weird vehicle, you're the center of attention, and you never have to stop and ask for directions. You wanted to see me, Red? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, we got the sleigh all ready to go. Now we just need you to rustle up some reindeer to pull it. So how many do you think you're going to need? Well, uh, who gets to be Santa this year? Moose Thompson. Oh, Moose is a pretty wide load, yeah. eh? Yeah. Yeah, we'll need about 20 reindeer. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna have to hide moose from the reindeer because, man, them reindeer, are like, they're like skittish, you know? Well, well, you would know, Ed, you know. Okay, I'll be back in an hour with the reindeer. All right, oh, great. Oh, yeah. and uh, I'll need about 100 guys to help me get them out of the back of the truck. 100 guys? That's a little overkill, isn't it? Red, what? in the animal control business, there is no such thing as overkill. <laughs> You know, I, I heard you wanted to see me. No, I didn't. No, I didn't see you. No, no. I just thought maybe I could help out planning with the parade or something, you know? You know what? We got it covered here. We're fine. Oh, yeah. oh good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. Yeah. We're good. So, so, what, so, so what sort of things are Santa throwing out to the kids? Well, his hand. He's going to wave. <laughs> no, it's a parade. Santa has tossed, like, treats or something out to the kids. Well, okay, we'll dig up some old fishing lures. <laughs> no. No, I don't think so, no. Well, okay, you know what, go see Dalton. Maybe he's got something in his store that he could give you to throw to the kids, huh? Okay, Mr. Yeah. Humphrey? Yeah. I sure hope he's in the Christmas spirit. Oh, sure he will be. Just make sure you tell him it's a tax write-off. <laughs> Lodge Word Game! Tonight's winner receives this coupon for 150 Botox injections. <laughs> this Christmas, kiss your wrinkles goodbye. If you can still use your lips. Okay, cover your ears, Dalton. Red, you've got 30 seconds to get Dalton Humphrey to say this word. You. You! Yeah, all right, Winston. And go! Okay, Dalton, this is an old-fashioned word for Christmas. Humbug. <laughs> okay, think about this. Something tied. Lemon fresh? <laughs> okay, okay. Remember that bald guy that was in the movies who's a really great actor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Elmer yeah. Fudd. <laughs> no? Okay, this, this is a kind of log that people use at Christmas. Catalog? <laughs> No, 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 this, this is something people burn. Uh, money. <laughs> you guys are almost out of time. Why, well, why do you have such a negative attitude towards the festive season, though? Well, gee, you should come by my house Christmas morning. Then you'll see. There you go. <laughs> This 
this is the repair shop part of the show we call if it ain't broke you're not trying and joining me tonight is explosives enthusiast edgar montrose what do you got for us edgar only one time with the pitchfork red no no what have you got for the repair shop oh nothing to repair red no i, I i'm just looking for some advice on which one of these gifts i should give my eight-year-old nephew well the stuffed animal well, on the one hand, I could probably give him this boring stuffed toy. Yeah, that's the one, the stuffed animal. Or I could give him this customized Edgar K.B. Montrose Jack in the Box. Any explosives involved in there, Edgar? Hopefully. <laughs> and what kind of a message does that send to the kids out there? Hmm? Well, it teaches them that life is full of surprises, that uh, <clears throat> you, you just can't make your problems go away. But you can make abandoned vehicles go away. No, Edgar, go with the stuffed animal. Oh, all right, I'll give him the stuffed animal. Oh, good man. But let me show you the jack in the box. Yeah, all right. You like surprises, Red? Not since that time I changed the diaper, no. <laughs> well, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. No, 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 no. <laughs> music around Christmas, don't they? Especially if it comes from something quaint, like this old pipe organ. Kind of takes you back to the olden days when your ancestors would maybe sing carols sitting around a coal fire freezing their butts off. <laughs> but one thing that hasn't changed over the years is the tiresome job of handing out the Christmas presents. So today on Handyman Corner, I'm gonna combine those two functions into kind of a Yuletide gift dispensing pipe organ thing. Because anytime you can build a device that does two jobs at once, there's a chance you won't have to do anything. <laughs> now, the only condition you need is that everything has to be wrapped in a cylindrical shape. You know, like this wine bottle here, or the sleeve of tennis balls, or even a rolling pin. And even if it's not the right shape, as long as it'll fit inside, say, one of these shipping tubes, it's fine. Now, you just wrap everything up good and snug, smooth down the outside of her there, make sure they're airtight, Kind of like your sleeping bag on Mexican night. Okay, now a pipe organ runs on air, so you pump on the pedals and the air goes through the pipes. And that's plenty of air for making music, but for our purposes, we're gonna need something with a little more oomph. So I've replaced the pedals with this high volume industrial air compressor. Okay, I'm not too sure how much pressure I need, so I'm just gonna open her up the hole. Then I'll just back it off if something breaks. Now all we have to do is match our various size gifts up with our various size pipes. Then when you press down on a casey, the compressor will play a note and fire the gift out to the recipient. Okay, uh, might want to give him a baseball glove or a pillowcase to catch it in. And make sure Grandpa's awake, or he won't be. And now, of course, you're going to be able to get the music and the gift giving over as quickly as possible. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you Well, by the way, make sure you pick a piece of music that hits all the right notes, huh? Here we are. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Hi there, boys and girls. You know, I hope they're still calling you that because I've seen some of your pictures in those teen magazines and, well, I'm just not sure anymore. <laughs> wow. Anyway, at this joyous time of year, I'd like you to start thinking about those who are less fortunate than yourselves. Me. <laughs> While you're at home, all snuggled in your bed, waiting for Santa to come down the chimney, 
I'm up here in my fire watchtower making sure there are no forest fires. Well, boys and girls, it's 40 degrees below zero. I'd kill for a friggin' forest fire. But oh no. And there you are at home, all snuggly and warm and cozy, singing Christmas carols and eating figgy pudding. Not me. I have very little pudding and absolutely no figgy. <laughs> On Christmas morning, you'll wake up to gifts underneath a tree. Oh, sure, the animals leave gifts for me underneath the trees, but they're very, very seldom wrapped, and they're never the right size. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I'm not looking for your pity. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am looking for your pity, and I'll tell you why. Because every once in a while, you have to stop thinking about yourselves and realize that there are people out there that care about you and that are doing their level best to take care of you. So, have a wonderful holiday season, but remember, it's not about you. It's about me. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> or the hills we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> now, just over at Moose Thompson's house, helping him get into his Sasa outfit. By golly, he, he, is a, he is a large man. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a stretchy material, so we could actually get it on over his butt, but we're going to have to grease the inside of the sleigh, or he'll have to stand for the whole parade. <laughs> Uncle Red, yeah. would you tell Mr. Humphrey that his offering is no good? You want me to give you something free so that Santa can toss treats to the kids and Red, there is a limit to what I can do? And what is that limit, Dalton? Seven cases of prunes. <laughs> yeah, but they're pitted prunes, so no one's gonna lose an eye or anything. But well, don't you have, like, little airplanes or stuffed toys to toss out to the kids? Well, yes. Yes, I do. I sell them. That's how I support myself. And that's how I'm able to give away things for free, like seven cases of prunes. <laughs> of course, if you don't want them. No, 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 no. We'll take them, Dalton. All right. I'll leave them beside the shed. Good. Prunes? Prunes. Get over it, Harold, all right? Well, uh, I, got, yeah. I got some bad news, Red. I could only get four reindeer. Well, no, that's, that's fine. Four, I'll get the job done. Four's fine. Not with Moose Thompson in the sleigh. Oh. In fact, I won't allow it. No, no, no. There's nothing meaner than a reindeer with a hernia. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Well, what, what do we do now, guys? Well, obviously, we have to find somebody smaller than Moose Thompson, but who still looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> Parts of our Santa Claus parade float was going to be our little Frosty the Snowman uh, display, so we are keeping it in the arena because we didn't have a lot of snow. Walter's not good on ice. That's the problem with. Oh, and he, but he seems to like to take Winston with him wherever he goes. So uh, Winston, Winston does not have the, the sense of humor that he really needs. Uh, and now, well, this is going to take a while. Um, all we're trying to do is get Frosty. Leave the no, 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 no. no. Well, great. Okay, so now we got the headless frosty, and we need some we need some fresh snow. Oh. So they got the zamboni there. I, I know these things. What they do is they scrape the ice, and then all the snow goes up into a to a hopper. And I figured we could use that as our snow supply, and then we could just make ourselves a new head for frosty on there. So I tell the guy, just grab grab a handful of snow. Come on, we're going to make a new a new head for frosty. Come on, get some snow there. Get some, watch yourself there, Walter. So Walter's a little shaky, but Winston's still carrying the grudge on Walter. Of course, of course well, that's, that's not so good. Not, and, uh, Winston finds that very funny, and I'm thinking, you know, try a little of your own. There we go. I feel so much better. And uh, Walter's enjoying that. And all you have to do with Walter is really just threaten him, and down he goes. But the broom flies through the air. When you know it hits the controls on the Zamboy, she starts heading towards us. And uh, at this point, it's every man for himself. Uh, Walter's kind of flailing away on the ice there. It's like, oh boy, this is not, oh boy, oh, oh man. Have a nice Christmas, Walter. Now she grinds to a halt with her. I don't know where he is in this, but uh, first thing we should do is just open her up and see, and uh, let's, oh, he's fine. All right, so we get Walter out of there, and meanwhile, Winston is back with the snow, the snow, and he's made himself a brand new head and got uh, Frosty right back the way he should be. Everything is good, we're set to go. But Winston figures to, to protect Frosty, apparently if you put a little coating of water, it'll freeze, make an ice coating on it, and then it won't be so susceptible to the damages. So he's just gonna do that, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, it's not as smart as it looks, Winston, because I believe they use the hot water in those Zambonis, and uh, is there not, so, to me, hot water and snow, it's not really a good, but he's saying, no, no, he knows, he know, he's a professional, he's good with a hose, he knows what he's 
Now the end comes off, now he's got hot water going everywhere. And I thought I got her turned off, but you know, not there's Frosty and uh, Luckily I had a sign handy that was just perfect for the occasion. And it was a great day. You okay? Oh man. We all know that Christmas is right around the corner, which is a time for gifts and joy and warm family moments. And they also expect you to decorate your house with lights and mistletoe and wreaths. Well, here's a quick, easy way to do what you gotta do and still save a few bucks. Get yourself all the old bows your wife has saved over the years and then sprinkle them in, into a window box. My wife's old bows are sprinkled all over the county. In a second box, you want to pour down a thin layer of liquid glue. Got to be something with a fair amount of adhesive power to it. <laughs> this seems perfect. Okay. I guess I might as well use all of this. I'm going to have a real problem getting the top back on there. <laughs> okay. Now you take a spare tire. Everybody has a spare tire this time of year. And you... You roll that through your glue bath. Right? Don't worry if it's an old tire, because you want to pick up as much glue as you can, and the less tread, the better. All is beautiful. <laughs> now you just roll your glued-up tire through your box of bows. You know, when you think about it, you're running over your wife's old bows. That's got to be fun, huh? <laughs> Whoever thought I'd get two jokes out of that? <laughs> Maybe I didn't. There we go, got ourselves a pretty handsome Christmas wreath. Good idea. Have yourself a Murray Chrysler and a Hyundai New Year. This is the portion of the show where we examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> That's true, eh? Okay. <laughs> Today's letter goes as follows. Uh, dear expert. La, la, la. I am nine years old, and all my friends say that Santa Claus does not exist. Is this true, or does he actually exist? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. You know, I don't know if I've ever seen the real Santa Claus. I mean, a jolly, obese guy with a white beard pretty much describes every lodge member. <laughs> well, Santa's not really obese, Red. He's just overweight. They eat a lot of blubber up there at the North Pole, you know. <laughs> and it's not just loaded with unsaturated fat, it is unsaturated. <laughs> oh, you've actually met Santa Claus, Mr. Shaughnessy? Well, no, to say I met him would be pushing it. And when Hap starts pushing it, we end up shoveling it. <laughs> this viewer has asked a specific question. I think if we can answer it, we should. Well, uh, you know I don't like to exaggerate. <laughs> But my run-in with Santa saved the world from nuclear annihilation. You asked for this. It was Christmas Eve, 1963. We were holding at our fail-safe points when word came from the Pentagon that an unidentified aircraft was approaching from the north. They figured it was the leading edge of a massive Russian attack, and we proceeded towards our targets inside the Soviet Union while NORAD got ready to shoot their plane down. Well, when we opened the bomb bay doors, we could see that actually it was Santa in his sleigh. Any alcohol served on that flight? <laughs> you know, Harold, a lot of this stuff is classified information. I may have said too much already. Oh, for sure. <laughs> okay, well, um, I would say to this viewer that um, sometimes you just have to believe. <laughs> even though that may be difficult. <laughs> but I'll tell you this much, I believe in Santa Claus. I believe in Santa. I believe in Santa more than I believe in Hap. <laughs> Boy, 
snow is really coming down. <laughs> now we're having the Santa Claus parade right after the launch, but you know, I'm hoping the reindeer can find their way through that blizzard. Yeah, you know, I think it's a good thing you being Santa. Yeah. Maybe it'll rub off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you might be right. I'm already thinking of jamming something down your stocking. Red, Red, we got a serious problem. What, you see a mouse or something? No, the reindeer ate all the prunes. <laughs> My car! That was seven cases of prunes. There's no way I'm standing in a sleigh behind them. Well, come on. Maybe you can stand in the back of the possum van. You know, we'll open the side door. You can still wave at the kids. Yeah. Okay, but I'm, I, I need a chauffeur. Oh, right. What are we gonna get? Well, Harold, if you're so doggone bright, won't you drive my van tonight? <laughs> And I'll go down in history. <laughs> Meeting time, Santa. Yeah, you go ahead, Rudolph. I'll be right down. Huh? <laughs> Good luck with that nose. If my wife was watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And uh, why don't you do me a favor? Clean out the fireplace. I'm dressed as Santa. Harold's driving the van. Pretty good chance we're gonna end up on the roof somewhere. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, have yourself a great Christmas and keep your stick on the ice. Come on, you guys. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Everybody sit down. The meeting's coming to order. Sit down, please. Sit down. All right. Oh. Quando omni flunkus mortis. Sit down. All right, men. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change. If I have to, I guess. Okay, man, listen, we got a pretty good blizzard going on out there, and the reindeer have eaten a fair whack of prunes. So we really want to be careful. There's lots of things to slip on. Oh, yeah. And Merry Christmas, guys. Come on, Harry.